Hello my friends, we are back in Luminar Neo and today we are talking about the Super Contrast tool. It's a very, very useful tool to use and I will show you exactly how it works. We'll do a few examples and uh, we'll learn all about it. To find your Super Contrast, you'll go to Edit and then in the toolbar, you'll find it under the Professional Tools. A lot of people get intimidated when they see Professional. They will think like, oh, that must be complicated. I don't know how to use it, so I'm not going to use it. But I'm here to tell you this is just normal tools. It's really easy to use and I will explain you how they work. When you open the tool, you'll be, you will find that you have six sliders. Uh, three of them will be the amount basically for the highlights, midtones and shadows. So what it does is splits the image into three luminosity masks, if you will. And you can work strictly on the highlights, strictly on the midtones or strictly on the shadows. The second uh, set of sliders, it's the balance. And those, as you can see, they're gray out when your highlights contrast, it's a zero or shadows contrast or, you know, midtone contrast. So you have to add some amount before the balance becomes available for you to move around. Now I am going to explain you how these sliders work and what do they do, and then we'll take a few examples. To be able to explain you a little bit better, I created this um, gradient and I will go into the super contrast. And let's see, I put these two pink lines over here to see that on the left side over here, we have our shadows. In the middle, we have our midtones, and on the right side, we have our highlights. Let's see how these um, tones are getting affected by our super contrast. I will increase the highlight contrast all the way to 100. We'll go 100% effect. And with 100% effect, now we can see when I move the balance, if I move it to the right, just as you can see on this uh, gradient, we have the shadows on the left and the highlights into the right. When I move this highlight balance to the right, I'm moving shadows into the highlights area. So you see these whites over here are getting darker. And if, if I move it to the left, I'm bringing the highlights into the shadows. So I'm switch, uh, swapping the balance. And now I'm getting more highlights into the shadows within this rectangle over here into my highlights. Again, if I move it into the right, I'm bringing the shadows into the highlights and to the left, I'm bringing the highlights into the shadows. So the balance is being shifted between darks and light. And this only affects this highlights area. This is for every tool in Luminar Neo. If you double click on the name, it will reset the tool. Let's move into midtones. I'll put it at 100% and you see it creates some contrast. It's at midtones, it's in, uh, balance is in the middle. As I move it to the left, I'm bringing more highlights into the shadows. As I move it to the right, I'm bringing more shadows into the highlights and I'm darkening things. You see that? Right and left, right and left. So that's what the midtones balance does. It brings more of these highlights into the shadows or the shadows into the highlights. I'm going to double click on it to reset it and let's see the shadows now. I'm going to put it to 100%. The same thing as I move the shadows from left to right, I'm bringing more of that darks into the highlights portion of the shadows. And the same thing if I move from the right to the left, I'm bringing more highlights from the shadows into the very blacks. So now that we see how these sliders work, Let's take some examples and work on real life. I am going to start with, uh, well, let's talk a little bit before, why is this better than just using the um, develop highlights and shadows? Well, when we work with highlights and shadows, we only have two sections. So imagine there's a line right here in the middle. So we have the highlights from 50% gray to the white, pure whites. And then we have the shadows from 50% grazed all the way to the pure black. So we get less control because now with two sliders with highlights and shadows, we can only affect either half the right side of this image or the left side of this image using the shadows. So by using the super contrast, we have three individual cells, three individual way of adjusting the contrast, the lights and the darks. So let's see how that translates in real life. Well, let's start with this image and with this image, I will go to the super contrast. 
and if I add highlights contrast, you see that I am just affecting the very lights of the image. As I bring the highlights balance to the right, I am darkening the whites. Or if I bring it to the left, I am brightening the whites, make them, you know, blow out. So, and for this case, I do not want to, I would not use the highlights because I like the highlights the way they are, but I would adjust the midtones and darken them. So I would go to like 100% and then just move it to the right to darken the highlights and that will give us some nice contrast. This is the before, this is the after, this is the before, this is the after. Let's take a different example. A great way to use uh, super contrast is to bring down uh, highlights into the sky. So for this image, if I go into edit, the way I will edit this with super contrast is I will definitely mess around with the highlights contrast all the way to 100. And just like that, without even messing with the balance, I'll leave it right at 50%. We got before and after, before and after, a lot more detail into the sky. Now, if I would edit this image, I would probably make the midtones just a little bit maybe darker or brighter. Let's see. I'll put the mid-tone contrast just to around 60% and then I can make them brighter or I can make them darker and bring in even more contrast. I think I want to make them just a little bit lighter because I don't want to darken the image too much. And this is our before and after, before and after. It's important to notice that every time you mess around with um, brightness and contrast, you will have affect the colors as well. So if you look at the colors of the building, they became more saturated and so did the sky. You see that before and after, before and after. You can see in this uh, bus moving over here, the streak of the color, that is the before and after. For me, when I edit sky, I do not like to have the sky so blue. So if I would edit this, I would go to color and then I would go into the saturation of the HSL and just takes down and cyan's a little bit down on the saturation, something, something like that. Not too much, then we're losing that contrast, but something like that. So let's see, this is our before and after, before and after. Let's take a different example. And this time I will work with this image. This, as you can see, it's completely blown out in the sky, so we really have no information there, but we can might be able to bring some information up into these highlights of the little bus. So if we go to super contrast and put the highlights contrast to 100%, you can see that immediately transformed the image, even brought a little bit of details into the sky. So this is our before, and this is the after, before and after, and that only took one slider. We can even darken the midtones a little bit. If I increase the midtones to 100%, maybe that's too much, maybe just around 50, and shift the balance a little bit to the right to darken it a little bit. And now we definitely have a lot more contrast. This is our before, this is the after, before and after. Let's take a couple of more examples. I will take this image. It's pretty low contrast image, so I think we can bring some details into the castle and the sky. If we go to the super contrast and increase the highlights contrast, that, well, I don't really like what that did. It kind of just made everything washed up, almost gray. So in um, this case, I want to move the highlights to the left because I want to brighten those highlights. And that kind of brought it back. This is the before and after, before and after. It almost gave you like an HDR effect. And then we can work maybe with the mid-tones. Maybe we'll go on 50% of this and make them darker and that creates even more contrast. And then if we want, we can go into the shadows and make the shadows a lot darker to get almost pure black, something like, well, that's too much, something like that. And this is our image before and after, before and after everything just kind of pops, looks a little bit more 3D. Let's see a different example. What can we do? Maybe we'll bring uh, down up the details into this image. The sky looks kind of, you know, blah with the water. But if we go to super contrast and work with highlights contrast, 
we can automatically bring that up so before and after before and after and then we can even work with mid-tones and add some mid-tones brighten them up a little bit and as you can see that did affect our color a lot look at the hand now it's way too red it's almost glowing this is the before this is the after this is the before and after and the way i would fix that is go back to color onto the saturation and take the reds down a little bit to make them look more natural something like that and let's see this is our image before and after before and after and that looks a lot better do we have one more example let's see maybe we'll work with the sky in here so we want to bring up some details into the sky this is a pretty grainy image and then maybe add some into the shadows some contrast so we can get a little bit more contrast make this image pop so i'll go highlight contrast all the way to the right and then the shadow contrast and make them darker something like that and we brought more drama into the image this is our before and after before and after by the way all these images i got them from unsplash if you've never heard the Unsplash, it's a stock website where you can get free stock images. I use Unsplash and Pexel a lot. I have a whole video about Pexels and how to load it into your Photoshop, use it as a plugin. Let's do this. This will be our last image. We'll go to Super Contrast and we'll bring down the highlights, maybe even darken them a little bit, something like that. And then we'll go to mid-tones, we'll add some contrast into the mid-tones, we'll darken those a little bit too. And then maybe even the shadows, we'll darken those further. And now this is our before and after, before and after. The blues are definitely way too saturated, so I will go to my saturations and bring down the blue. And I like that a lot better. Let's see, this is our before and after, before and after. So we edited all these images just using one adjustment and that is super contrast. Very important adjustment, very easy to use and it yields great results. Let's do one more image since we're here. I have this image over here. We'll go to edit. I do like this kind of faded look on this image. I think it's great as it is. But let's see if we can bring in even more. Maybe highlights like that and then we'll add some blacks and the very shadows and there you go this is our before and after before and after i hope this was helpful and you learned something new thank you so much for watching my name is skylar ewing i will see you in my next video